Hello everybody. Welcome to Word Shard. Let's start with lesson number 2. What are we going to do in the second lesson? We are going to discuss certain things. The second chapter. But before we discuss the second chapter, we will first recapitulate the last work. The last class was on sentences. So first we are going to recapitulate on sentences. Then we will move to subject and predicate which is going to be our topic today. And then we will also study the rules that we must follow to solve these sentences, to understand these sentences better. And in the end, we will solve some questions like last class on subject and predicate so that the whole topic is clear to us. Okay, so the first recapitulation part. In the last class, we learned that sentences are of four kinds. First, sentences are a group of words that are placed together side by side to make a proper meaning. There are four types of sentences. Number one, assertive sentence. Number two, imperative sentence. Number three, exclamatory sentence. And number four, interrogative sentence. These are the four sentences, four types of sentence. Now, let us move to subject and predicate. Subject and predicate. In the last class, what do we learn? We learned what are sentences. Now, the group of words used together to form a sentence. In the last class, we learned that sentences are a group of words, a number of words sitting side by side to give a proper meaning. For example, if I want to say that I want a glass of water, then I have to say the sentence in this manner only. I have to place the words in a correct order. I cannot say water me. No, that does not give a proper meaning. We have to say I want a glass of water for a complete meaning. So, the group of words used together to form a sentence can be further divided into how many parts? They can be divided into two parts. They can be divided into two distinct parts. What are these two parts? One sentence can be divided into part A subject and part B predicate. What are these two? See, subject means when we are writing the names of a person or a place or a thing. When we are talking about a person or a place or a thing, that particular person, place or thing becomes a subject. And the predicate, what is that predicate? The predicate gives us information about the person, place or thing. For example, if I say, I have a book in this sentence, which one is Subject, I, because I is the person we are talking about. So, I is the subject and the rest of the sentence becomes the predicate. I becomes the subject and the rest of the part. I brought a pen to the class. So, I becomes the subject and brought a pen to the class becomes predicate. Let us take another sentence. Let us uh, talk about Delhi. Delhi is a beautiful place. Now, Delhi is the name of a place. So, Delhi will be the subject. And what will be the predicate? Is a beautiful place. The complete thing comes to the predicate. Let us talk about a thing. Let us say, a table lamp is a beautiful decorative item. So, we are talking about a table lamp. So, the table lamp becomes a thing. So, it is the subject, a table lamp. Rest of the sentence becomes predicate. Let us move to the different examples to make it further clear to us. See the sentence. Taj Mahal is situated in India. We are talking about what? Are we talking about India? No. We are talking about the Taj Mahal. Where is the Taj Mahal? It is in India. So we are talking about the Taj Mahal. So what will be the subject? Taj Mahal, not India. So we are because we are talking about a particular object that becomes the subject. So, our Taj Mahal is the subject. Okay. And the rest of the part which is, is situated in India, the complete portion, rest of the sentence becomes the predicate. We will see in the next picture is situated in India. This whole thing now becomes the predicate. Okay. Let us move to the definition of it. So, the part which names the person or thing or even a place, 
we are speaking about is the subject of the sentence. When we are talking about a person, when we are talking about a thing, when we are talking about a place, that becomes the subject. Only that part becomes the subject. For example, if I say, the tall boy is my brother. So, we are talking about whom? We are talking about the tall boy. So, the tall boy becomes the subject and the rest of the part becomes the predicate. If we talk about a ball, the ball is blue in color. We are talking about a thing. What is that thing? The thing is the ball. So, the ball is the subject and the rest of the part of the sentence becomes the predicate. Is blue in color. This complete portion becomes the predicate. So, and the part which tells something about the subject. In this sentence, the ball is blue in color. Is blue in color. We are talking about what? We are talking about the ball. So, from the second part of the sentence, which is the predicate, we come to know about what? We come to know about the ball. So, whatever we learn about the subject becomes the predicate. So, the ball is blue in color. Is blue in color. This complete thing is the predicate. So, now we will also have to see the various rules we have to follow in subject and predicate. Let us come to the rules. See, rule 1. What is the first rule? The subject of a sentence usually comes first, but occasionally it is put after the predicate. Mostly, almost in all of the sentences, we will see that the subject, the thing or the place or the person we are talking about sits in the first part of the sentence. For example, the tall boy is my brother. In this sentence, where is the subject? The subject comes first, then we talk about the predicate. The tall boy is sitting in the first place, then we are talking about the sentence. It, again, in the second sentence, as we talked about earlier, the blue ball is very nice. In this sentence, the blue ball comes first. Next, rest of the part predicate comes later, after the subject. So, mostly this happens. But in certain cases, we can also see the opposite. We will see an example over here. See this example. Here comes the bus. Which one is the subject? On which thing are we talking about here? What are we talking about here in this sentence? We are talking about the bus. But the bus is sitting not at the first part of the sentence, but at the last. It is not sitting in the front. It is not sitting in the first part that is in the front of the sentence. No, it is sitting in the end. So, sometimes it can also happen that the subject is placed at the end of the sentence. Mostly what happens? Mostly it is the opposite. Mostly the subject sits in front and then the predicate comes. The bus is coming. In this sentence also what are we seeing? We are seeing that the bus which is the subject sits in front. But in this particular sentence there will be a number of sentences, few sentences where we can see that the subject is placed at the end. Okay, this is the first rule. There are some exceptions, isn't it? In certain cases, there will be certain exceptions. So, this is one such exception. Let's move to rule number two. What is rule number two? In imperative sentences, what are imperative sentences? We have learned in the last class. Imperative sentences can be requests, can be orders, can be commands, isn't it? If I tell you, go get me a blue pen from my desk. So, this is an order or please bring me a blue pen. This is a request. So, these kind of sentences are imperative sentences as we have already discussed in the last class. So, in such sentences, in imperative sentences, the subject is left out. Left out means we often do not use the subject at all. We don't require the subject. For example, if I say, get out of the class. This is what kind of a sentence? This is an imperative sentence because this is an order. This is a command. But can we find the subject in this sentence? Get out of the class. Whom are we talking to? Is there a person we are naming when we are stating get out of the class? No, we are just giving the order, get out. But who will get out? Ravi, Sham, Binod, who will get out? That we do not mention in this sentence. So, in imperative sentence, the subject is left out. We do not mention the subject at all. For example, sit down. If we have said, Ravi, please sit down, then Ravi becomes the subject. But we are not placing Ravi in front. We are not using any subject at all. Okay? So, here the subject you or any particular name is not mentioned. However, we have understood that there is a person who is told to sit down. 
Next, we will move to the second sentence. Welcome him. We are talking to somebody and telling him to welcome another person. Welcome him inside the house. Something like this. But whom are we talking to? That is not mentioned. You please welcome him. We are not saying that. We are saying just this much. Welcome him. We are not mentioning any subject over here. No name of a place, thing or uh, person is mentioned in this place. Okay. So, this is rule 2. In imperative sentences, the subject is left out. So, we learn about two rules. Rule number 1. What is that? Sometimes the subject can be placed at the end of the sentence. What is rule 2? In imperative sentences, the subject is not required. Okay. Now, we will move to the exercises. Another few we will do so that we can understand if the subject and predicate is clear to us or not. Okay. Exercise. Late AP, the, number, the, first ex, uh, the first question over here. See the first one. Late APJ Abdul Kalam was a scientist. Over here, what are we talking about? Who is the person we are talking about? We are talking about APJ Abdul Kalam. I am dividing the subject and predicate with a slash so that you can understand. Answer number one, late APJ Abdul Kalam, this whole thing is the subject and the rest of the part was a scientist is a predicate because we are talking about a person over here. Next, bad habits grow unconsciously. Now, what are we talking about? We are talking about a habit. What kind of habits? bad habits. So, bad habits become the subject and grow unconsciously. This part becomes the predicate. Okay. Third one. The ripe mango was bought by my friend. So, we are talking about a ripe mango which was purchased by my friend. So, which one is the subject over here? The ripe mango is the subject. Rest of the part is the predicate. Now, we will see the fourth one. Miss Pratiksha was very annoyed Annoyed means very angry with me for my rude behavior. It is a big sentence. But we have to understand that whom are we talking about over here? We are not talking about my rude behavior, being annoyed. No, we are talking about Miss Pratiksha. So, Miss Pratiksha becomes the subject over here. Rest of it, the whole part, such a big sentence, was very annoyed with me for my rude behavior. This complete thing becomes the predicate. Next, we will move to the Fifth sentence, I can never forgive you. I can never forgive you. We are talking about whom? We are talking about I. Who can never forgive another person? So, I is the subject. Can never forgive you becomes the predicate. Next sentence, stone walls do not make a prison. So, we are talking about what? We are talking about a thing. What is that thing? That thing is stone walls. So, stone walls do not make a prison. In this sentence, Stone walls become the subject and the rest of the part that is do not make a prison becomes a predicate. Next sentence. Get out of my classroom. See, what is this? This is rule number two. Why is this rule number two? Because we have no subject over here. We do not have the mention of any subject in this place. So, this is rule number two. Imperative sentences do not require subjects. So, the whole thing, get out of the classroom becomes the predicate because subject is not mentioned here. Full part is the predicate only. Next, we will move to the next sentence. Here goes Alok to school. Sorry. Here goes Alok to school. In this sentence, what will be the subject? Here, Alok is the subject. Isn't it? Alok is the person who is going to school. Rest of it is the predicate. Next sentence, the cackling of geese saved Rome. We are talking about what? We are talking about the cackling of geese. So, the full thing, the cackling of geese, the whole thing will become subject and the rest of the part that is saved Rome becomes the predicate. The last sentence for today, the early bird catches the worm. We are talking about what? We are talking about an animal. We are talking about a bird. So, the early, the early bird, the whole thing, the early bird, this thing, this becomes the subject and the rest of the part which is catches the worm becomes the predicate. Okay, so we have done 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have done 10 sentences on subject and predicate. Please write in the comment section how much you have scored over here. Okay, I think this part is clear. Thank you so much everybody. Bye-bye.